watching the Urban Debate 360 on Magic Bricks now. I'm Fede Souza on 360. We pack together all of the news and civic issues that directly impact your quality of life in any city in India. Let's take a look at what's making headlines today in your city. Bangalore civic body, the BBMP, gives citizens three days to tear down their own homes. This comes two days after the civic body made its demolition details public after we insisted that citizens be given a fair chance. Portals claim another life in Kalyan. Citizens ask how many more lives will be snuffed out before the government wakes up and takes measures. And in Mumbai, the BMC extends the deadline to make Mumbai pothole free for the eighth time. This self-set deadline looks nowhere near being set as there are 1,700 potholes to be filled in the city of Mumbai. It continues to rain in the city of Mumbai and the potholes continue to build. Mumbai civic body BMC had given itself a deadline to make Mumbai pothole free. It extended that deadline seven times over. It has now missed the deadline and given itself an eighth extension on this deadline. It's almost like an internal joke in the BMC that they keep setting set deadlines for themselves and keep extending their own deadlines. No work is getting done. Civic body officials have personally told our reporters in Magic Bricks now there are over 1,700 potholes yet to be repaired in the city of Mumbai. People are dying because of these pothole roads. This is not a matter of your drive to the office, although that's a deep enough concern in this city. This is not the matter of corruption in the system that's causing the city to build bad roads that are not being maintained, of public money that's draining away. This is, a, this is a matter of life. People are losing their lives because of the quality of this road. Disha Shah has this report. 1,700, that's the number of potholes that are yet to be repaired in the city of Mumbai. That's what BMC officials tell Magic Bits now. In fact, right now, also you can see I'm standing here at the CST, which is very close to BMC's office. And you can see the entire stretch of the road is filled with potholes. There, uh, there are patches of uh, work uh, which is not yet uh, complete by the workers. In fact, officials also tell us that to uh, repair all, to fin to repair all these 1,700 potholes, they uh, they will need a week more. Remember, BMC had asked, uh, uh, had taken seventh uh, extension by, uh, you know, promising to the citizens of Mumbai that they will repair all the portals by 21st of August. But clearly, this doesn't seem to be picture going by the looks of it. You can see that the cars are moving. The traffic is very slow here at this uh, uh, particular road. In fact, officials also uh, tell us uh, that workers are working here to ensure that, uh, you know, the portals are filled and uh, they also thank to the dry spell that the city is facing for the past three days. They have managed uh, to uh, repair close to 300 portals across the city is what BNC officials told us. And lastly, they also tell us that they are also facing lack of manpower because workers are really not keen to work uh, double shifts as uh, it was directed by the Municipal Commissioner Ajoy Mehta. So clearly uh, this uh, could be BMC's eighth extension to repair the potholes in the city of Mumbai. Now while Mumbai's civic body, the BMC is missing its deadline after deadline in Kalyan, very close to Mumbai, another life was lost due to portals. And this is what we're talking about. This is why this issue is such a problem for us. A bank executive lost his balance on a motorcycle after he hit a portal, following which a truck rammed into him, killing him on the spot. An FIR has been registered in the connection of this case. And it just doesn't seem like our government officials realize what they're dealing with. Here's the report. We are on the arterial road that leads to Kalyan from the Mumbai Nasik Highway where on August 10th Vijay Kendre, a 35-year-old resident of Titwala, lost his life while he was riding on his bike along with a friend Amit Pathak who was riding pillion. While they were going on this road, they lost their balance because of the three potholes that had been there on this road for quite some time. They lost their balance and unfortunately Vijay Kendre came under the tyre of a truck which was right beside their bike. Right after the accident on the next day, the potholes were taken care of and the road was levelled by the administration, that is by the MSRDC who has been tasked to manage this road. However, it was too little too late because by the time the road was taken care of, Vijay Kendre had already lost his life because of the injuries that he suffered on his head. 
he decide he used to decide in Titwala and is survived by his wife and his son. The question now that the family is asking is that who will take care of the wife and the son when Vijay Kendra was the sole breadwinner of the family? The family has blamed the contractor who was uh, charged to take care of this road and the administration who was supposed to have better roads in Kalyan. And not only in Kalyan, we have seen such incidents happening in Mumbai too. How long until the administration realizes that these deaths are happening, that these injuries are taking place, that these accidents are taking place? That is the same question that Vijay Kendra's friend Amit Pathak has asked too, that because of the administration lackadaisical attitude, he has lost his friend. In fact, he had to see his friend lose his life in front of his eyes. इसमें किसकी जिम्मेदारी है यहाँ पर जिम्मेदार कौन है प्रशासन मैम यहाँ पे प्रशासन की जिम्मेदारी है कहाँ के ये रोड बनाने वाले कॉन्ट्रेक्टर की जिम्मेदारी है इन लोगों का ध्यान न रहने की वजह से किसी के परिवार का कोई कमाने वाला सदस्य चला गया सर हम लोग यहाँ पर आप इतने सालों से रह रहे हैं साल दर साल हम लोग देख रहे हैं कि पॉट होल्स ठीक नहीं होते हैं इलेक्शन हुए थे अभी हाल ही में महाराष्ट्र में नई गवर्नमेंट आई है तो ये गवर्नमेंट जो है जिनको आप चुन के लाते हैं अपने लीडर को चुन के लाते हैं उनको आप क्या कहना चाहेंगे मैम उनको मैं क्या कहना चाहूँगा उनको सब कह के थक चुकी है और मैं क्या कहूँगा अगर मैं अभी कह के भी मुझे कोई मतलब नहीं है क्योंकि क्या अभी मैं उनको कहूँ तो क्या कहूँ क्योंकि सब कह रहे हैं तो भी कुछ काम नहीं हो रहा है तो मेरे कहने से कोई मतलब नहीं है क्योंकि अभी आप देख लीजिए एक दिन पहले ये रोड अगर बन जाता तो शायद मेरा दोस्त यहाँ पे रहता and to demolish it themselves to aid citizens in this activity the bbmp has very helpfully uploaded a map of the demolition on its website on sunday now it turns out to not just be a map this is a list of survey numbers in each neighborhood what you have to do as a citizen is go on to the website take a look at the survey numbers then go visit the local bbmp office or the revenue office and find out if your home corresponds to any of those survey numbers and then what portion of your home stands on uh, the uh, drain that they are talking about and what portion of your home will need to be demolished you have 3 days to do this after the 3 days up the bbmp will begin raising homes again now you should also remember that the map or those details are not complete the bbmp is still working out what it is like in the rest of the city ordinary citizens bear the brunt of the bbmp acts no action has been taken to date against the big developers or malls or office buildings remember while people lose their homes in this manner it gives larger developers the opportunity to approach the court and get a stay order you and i will not have that opportunity because we have not been given notices rahul dharma sent us this report from bangalore on day 11 of the demolition drive today is the 11th day of the demolition drive here in bengaluru remember for 3 days now since it was a long weekend and with the independence day being yesterday the bbmp had put demolition work on hold but today uh, demolition has started we are right now uh, in near lal bagh uh, that's where over 10 houses have been demolished uh, on this very stretch uh, uh, because uh, they have encroached uh, on rajakalways uh, also demolition work uh, has happened in bomanhalli while the confusion around which houses will be demolished continue to remain a residents that i spoke to here tell us that uh, while markings were made a few days back no sort of notice was given to them a story that we have been uh, at magic bricks now uh, talking uh, and uh, really debating as far as citizens voices are concerned uh, also uh, uh, while bbmp has put on its website uh, 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 maps uh, uh, describing uh, encroachments uh, there's a lot of confusion among citizens because Uh, it's survey numbers that have been put up people are not able to find out if their home is on an encroachment and will be demolished next uh, bbmp meanwhile says the list that they have been put up is got an exhaustive list so the number of homes to be demolished over the next few days can only go up so clearly the confusion even on the 11th day remains as to which homes will be bulldozed uh, uh, residents here also uh, echo the similar sentiment uh, ground uh, there's still a lot of confusion uh, and uh, we are understanding that demolition work will uh, only gain up pace now and across all zones uh, the demolition work will start uh, but for citizens they are really asking a few questions uh, as to why bbmp is not being transparent uh, as far as uh, uh, telling people about it why aren't big sharks being targeted uh, 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 right now and also the clarity that bbmp is lacking in this demolition drive 
कि गवर्नमेंट आर्डर के ऊपर उन्होंने सेल कर दिया वो सेल करने के बाद में मेरे को उन्होंने सेल डीड इशू कर दिए तीन बजे मेरे को जाके रजिस्टर करने का था तीन बजे को उनका एक आदमी कोई गलती से एक लेटर लिख दिया उधर ड्रेन है बोल के मेरे को सात साल से उन्होंने ऐसा ही सता रहे उधर ड्रेन है बोल के अभी तक रजिस्टर करके नहीं दिए अभी लास्ट वीक में आके क्या कर दिए वो आपका जो जगह है वो क्या है हमारे को मालूम नहीं इधर ड्रेन है ये ड्रेन है बोल के हम इसको डिमोलिश कर रहे हैं बोल के उन्होंने आके मार्किंग कर दी अभी मार्क करके गए आपको बताया नहीं गया कि आपका नोटिस किसी आपको टाइम नहीं दिया कुछ नहीं कुछ भी नोटिस नहीं कुछ नहीं वो उन्होंने ये पैसा भरो बोल के मेरे को लेटर दिया है मैं पैसा भर के सात साल हो वो मेरे पास अभी लेटर इधर मौजूद है दे आर नॉट बॉदरिंग दे आर पुटिंग ब्लेम ऑन वन आर अदर वे टू पुट द डंपिंग प्लेस दे आर आस्किंग इट टू शो सो दे आर पुटिंग आस्किंग द रेगुलर इंजीनियर्स टू शो दिस इन दिस रेगुलर इंजीनियर्स आर टेलिंग दिस स्पेशल सेल इन द बीबीएमपी इज देर एज कॉल्ड स्टॉम वाटर ड्राइंग सेक्शन सो फॉर दैट दे हैव यूज सम्स हैव ग्रांटेड फॉर दिस थिंग सो दे आर टू डू दिस थिंग्स एंड ऑल बट अगेन वी विल फॉलो इट अप एंड विल सी दैट इट इज वी टेकन इट आउट फ्रॉम एटलीस्ट आउट विथ इन अ वीक टाइम अदर देर वी स्मेल इट मे कॉज अ एपिडेमिक डिसीजेस मैडम Dr Sen thank you for joining us uh, first i want to uh, acknowledge the fact that on demands of this channel the bbmp has in fact made a lot of the information that we had asked for public can we expect more information from the bbmp in the days to come i would like to congratulate both you and your channel for raising the issues of the common people uh, because of which uh, whether it is my government or some other government will have to get into action to see that uh, the problems of uh, being faced by the common people in day to day life are being solved uh, by the government of the day if you, if the state government want to demolish illegal buildings sir i i am going to tell straight away 50% of the buildings in bangalore they have to demolish 50 this is the fact one or the other way all are deviating the rules hmm. all are encroaching the government lands there are so many reports there are so many court directions if the state government want to implement the high court judgments and they want to implement the act strictly they have to demolish 50% of the buildings all over bangalore this is it also why true? the state government is doing this uh, in, uh, uh, without uh, humanity why they are demolishing the buildings so far we have not understand at least they have to provide alternative if they want to execute the uh, judgment of the high court they must uh, alternative things they have to provide to the residents siddhe gowda ji can you please let us know as to what was the imminent threat in dodgom yes. sandra there was no flood alert it is not a low lying area how come that was chosen for the demolition people yes. who have been resident for the last 30 40 years yes. have not seen floods in that area hello yes. uh, we want to the waterway you know that will uh, you are exercised from the six uh, last six months to make the pakka uh, drains according to that uh, now you are going to uh, ascertain the what are the uh, according to revenue people will uh, remove the encroachment you are telling me that i might have my kata paper i might have property tax i might have all of the facilities from the bbmp no. but still i should just i cannot trust any of these papers and none of it means that my property is actually legal so which means any house in bangalore right now can be illegal any house constructed in the last 100 years can be illegal in bangalore we are not saying we don't want the demolition, demolition to, happen. to happen we want demolition to happen in a even handed way for big and small you are only going you after small then what do you want then what do you want go after the big developers go after the big developers as well we are, are going for right, everyone right we are the going for everyone so how did you start then you tell me how where, did, where is it tell me how shows, more than 20 shows with your proof See, Yeah. Mr. Siddaramaiah, Chief Minister yeah. of Karnataka, got a lot of the site from the BDA in the tank itself. In the irrigation tank, Mr. Siddaramaiah, long back, got a lot of the site and he sold. Now somebody, innocent people, have built up the house in the Dallas colony. What Mr. Siddaramaiah is going to take the action? We're taking a look at all of the civic news from your city that affects your quality of life in Mumbai. There's uh, get more space to walk around Kolaba. The police steps out, steps up the patrol teams in Chennai's Mar Mariana, Marina Beach. Let's take a look at what's making news in your city.
Let's begin with Mumbai. Mumbaikers expect more space to walk around in the tourist hotspot, Kolaba. Kolaba's Taj Mahal Hotel can no longer restrict pedestrians from using footpaths. This is currently blocked by planters for security reasons post the aftermath of the 26 bar 11 attacks. Now, the civic body BMC has now asked Taj Hotel to open up entry and exit points of these pavements. Trivandrum Civic Body, meanwhile, is expanding its kitty to fund the city's development. The Civic Body has earmarked a whopping 232 crore rupee for the current financial year. Large projects like new crematoriums and footover bridges with escalators have also been included. The report will now be presented before the District Planning Council for approval. Moving on to Chennai now, Chennai's police attempt to prevent loss of lives due to drowning at the famous Marina Beach backfired on Monday. Patrol teams at the beach had to resort to lati charge in an attempt to control migrant workers from venturing into the sea, thereby leaving two workers injured. Beach patrolling has been stepped up ever since fatalities at the beach has increased. Pune, meanwhile, seems to be jinxed. Following heavy rainfall over the last couple of days, a landslide occurred on the Katrach to Dehu Road bypass on Sunday. While traffic had to be diverted towards Old Katrach Ghat, the traffic police has now written to the NHAI to fix the spot. And for the citizens of Mumbai, I have some bad news. Towards the end of August, we have remembered two taxi unions in this city that run different taxi unions and there are different taxis that are aligned to these unions. Now, both of these unions have had a common cause. They are up against the aggregators Ola and Uber and they want the government to bring both of these aggregators under the rules that the taxi unions have to follow, which is a fixed rate, a fixed fare, having to use only CNG vehicles and having to paint their cars a certain way and wear uniforms. There's a list of rules that the taxi drivers have to follow and their demand is that Ola Uber drivers and aggregators follow the same rules. Now, here's the problem. For some reason, for the various politics that's been, uh, that, that comes into play in unions as well, the two unions cannot agree with each other. They're not working together. As a result, they have threatened to go on strike on two separate days. Now, here are the unions, the Mumbai Auto Rickshaw and Taxi Men's uh, Union, that's one, and the Jai Bhagwan Taxi Union, which is the second, have called for strikes on two different days. So, the August 29th and August the 31st are both going to be taxi auto strikes in the city of Mumbai, which means that as citizens, we will have two days of nightmares to deal with. Shashank Rao, the president of one of those unions, the Auto Rickshaw Taxi Men's Union, spoke to us at Magic Bricks now. He told us what his key demands are from the government. We have three major demands. One is that the government should immediately act and stop all the illegal transport happening in the city. That is happening through illegal buses, illegal private cars and call center cars uh, who take away our business illegally. It is affecting the autos very badly. Secondly, they should rein in all the aggregators. They should get in rules and uh, uh, code of conduct for the aggregators and till such time that the rules are not framed uh, they should stop all the aggregators from operating on the roads of Mumbai and thirdly they should give badges to all those drivers of auto rickshaws who have a license of three years so that they could earn their daily wages without any harassment from the authorities. Well, of course, we'll be tracking those strikes very carefully for you on this channel. That's August the 29th and August the 31st, when those two unions will go on strike across the city. Let's also take a look at what's making news across the nation right now. The Bihar State Assembly has unanimously passed the GST Constitutional Amendment Bill in a single special session of Parliament today. Keeping good on its commitment, Bihar has become the second state after Assam to do so. Bihar, along with some other states, sought a speedy implementation of the GST as states look forward to larger revenues from tax collection. Remember, the bill is currently out to be ratified in at least 15 state legislatures before the president can formally notify the GST Council. After Home Minister Rajnath Singh's rather tense visit to Pakistan, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley is likely to skip the finance minister's SARC meet in Pakistan. Scheduled for the 26th and the 20 to the 28th of August, reports indicated that the Economic Affairs Secretary, Shakti Kanta Das, will represent India instead. 
However, the Prime Minister is expected to deliver the final word on the issue. More bad news, five people died and 15 others were injured in fresh clashes in Jammu and Kashmir today, taking the total number of deaths to a shocking 65 since the killing of 22-year-old separatist leader Buran Wani on the 8th of July. Remember, the state has been in curfew ever since for over a month now. A high-level meeting in Delhi attended by Home Minister Rajnath Singh, National Security Advisor Ajit Doval and Director of Intelligence Bureau reviewed the situation in the wake of violent, fresh violence. Protesters clashed with security forces in a village in the Magam area of Budgam district today. Police say they opened fire to disperse the crowd as they threw stones at the vehicle of the Central Reserve Police Force of the CRPF. Five people were killed in the clashes that followed. Well, heavy rains across Himachal Pradesh led to a landslide in the Kinaur district which blocked the National Highway 5 at Nyagul, Nyagul Sari area. Vehicular movement has been blocked in the area for almost 12 hours. Rains also disrupted normal life in other parts of the state. And in Gujarat, the government implemented its decision of exempting small vehicles and government transport vehicles from paying toll on 27 plazas on 12 state highways. This decision of the state road transport is likely to save 20 crore rupees every year for small enterprises. All right, that's a wrap here of the Urban Debate 360. Thank you for watching. Remember, our focus here is primarily on what concerns you and your quality of life in all of our urban centers. If there's an issue bothering you, feel free to get in touch. We'll take it up, we'll investigate it, and we will find you solutions here on this channel. Thank you for watching. Stay with Magic Bricks now. You can watch live TV on our website mbnow.in. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash magicbricksnow. And don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at magicbricksnow. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com forward slash magicbricksnow.